Yeah. Coach, you've managed and developed a lot of players as the years have gone. How would your approach change if at all the way the game is developed? It's not going to be. Still teaching the guys. You know, the style of play that you hear about the strike after the home run. You still got to teach these guys how to play. We just want to know the box. And as they develop through the system, they're going to create a value for the organization. What type of player they're going to be. But here, here at the lower level, man, you don't know how to play. You don't know how to, play. You know how to put a bunch down. Okay, you can't ever turn a double play when you need to. It's a, it's a fundamental game. You know, I don't care where you play. Okay, you think about it when you play. Uh, you know, you watch playoff baseball. It's fun little baseball. Game. And that's what we're going to stress at this level. And, um, you know, believe me, I, I, what I did in college is not going to be any too much different. So, do you take a lot of stock in sort of things like launch angles? To me, there's value. You look at swing, swing planes, it's about playing, but it's contact and it's good contact. Okay. And it's about maturity. There are guys that are playing in all minor league systems that don't have power until it takes two or three or four years until they mature. I'm not a big launch angle guy. I want true to hard contact. I want, if I, want, if I want players to be able to find a barrel on a consistent, you know, on, in a, in consistent on a consistent basis. Now, as the defending champs, you have a target on your back. So, what kind of things are you looking to change up in order to defend that title? I'm not going to change anything up. We're just going to go about developing and then developing a process of winning. Culture. Okay, I, I was not here last year. Um, it's going to be a new group of players. There's not a lot of, I, I don't know what the roster is going to be, but every year is a different year, and the approach is to get better every day and going out and try to win a goal. And it's just a grind for the season. We're playing a lot of games in a short period, 76 games in 82 days, six, whatever it may be. You know, we're playing one at a time. Hopefully you string some together, you eliminate your losing streaks, okay? And, but the bottom line is it's consistency of play. That's what I'm What do you mean? These guys playing good baseball on a consistent basis. Coach Blankmeyer, best of luck this year. Thank you. Great to see you. See you. See you. Jamie put a hat on that. Yes, absolutely. Back to the very beginning. As you know, 
Uh, the Brooklyn Cyclone Stadium here is, uh, is, is 21 years old, I believe. 20th season this year. 20th season this year. But they, they housed the first season, which was the Toronto franchise, on the campus of St. John's. So when you saw us play, you know, uh, the city field, uh, it goes back quite a bit. So uh, it's it's interesting that I've ended up here, to believe it, believe it or not. You know, 20 something years, and now here in, in the Brooklyn Cyclone Stadium, we've been waiting to, you know, build. It's, 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 it's surreal. I love the game. The players keep it young. Um, love working out, love for OBP, love hitting the fuck up. Uh, the game keeps you young. And I still have the little boy in me. Um, and I, I, I feel great. And it's kind of like he revitalized me. Uh, you know, going to a college career, and I've coached several years at, at uh, Seton Hall, and you know some of the people I coached, Mo Vaughn and Craig Biggio, one of those guys. You know, I, you know, there are a lot of great, great players in, in that, that history. And, uh, we just had a banquet, and we had uh, Straw there, we had Timmy Tuffle there, we had uh, a Doc Gooden there. Uh, anytime I had a banquet at, 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 at St. John's, we'd have a player like Matt Harvey, or David Wright, or Jacob DeGrom, uh, Todd Frazier. You know? So there's a loyalty, the loyalty that we had to the, to the Met fans and, and to the Met players. So, just, like I said, I can't tell you. I'm just, I can't wait to go. So I know a lot of the fans here, Cyclone Super fans, are big Mets fans, will have a ton of questions, so I hope your trivia game is uh, on point. Because we'll, 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 we'll give it a go. So, uh, we'll take a bunch of questions tonight. Feel free to ask whatever it may be. Say your name if you'd like, if you feel brave enough. And uh, The Wolf is going to be our first uh, question. Well, known as The Wolf, but the real name is Dave Peckerard. Uh, but uh, welcome to Cyclones, welcome to Brooklyn, and uh, I guess I was also at the field at St. John's watching the uh, Pittsfield Mets play the Queens Kings. Uh, my question is, based on the change in managers, uh, part of the reason some people believe that the change was made was a question of playing drafted versus non-drafted players. Um, based on performance. So the question is, yes, we do have to make sure everybody gets developed, but does player performance get you the playing time in your managership? First, uh, you know, the change obviously is an organizational decision, so and certainly I support the decision that I said I, I, I accepted the position in that organization because I believe in the direction that Brody has and Allen and Jared Banner. Um, player development is an interesting thing. All I can tell you, when I manage a ball club, whatever lineup that's going to be played, okay, is expected to win. We're going to play a win. And you have to play the players to develop. You have to give players the opportunity. Okay? So uh, that, that is a loaded question. It may not be answered to your question, but obviously we have prospects that we have to see play. We have some other guys that may be considered filling type players, but they'll get the opportunity. The bottom line, the organization will evaluate it and make decisions on it. And I'm, I'm a part of that decision process. But uh, we want guys in this organization uh, that are process driven, that work hard, okay, that play to win and play the game the right way. And, and there's a demand on it. That's what we're looking for in the organization. I'll certainly take some other questions. <coughs> Jim Dolan. Hi, Jim Dolan. I covered the Brooklyn Cyclones for the local paper, the home reporter. And I'd like to know how uh, you came to the Mets. Were you recruited by the Mets? Did you go uh, seeking the position? And uh, how did you uh, come here? Um, I can't say I recruited. There was discussions for the past couple of years about being involved in the organization. And uh, uh, this year was the right time for me. And the position was offered for me. So uh, I, I thought the time was right to cross over from college baseball to professional baseball. I've had other opportunities, both at the minor league level and as a pro job office. 
but uh, it just wasn't right for me. I just felt I felt I'm a New York and I want to be a New York organization, the other organization. Follow-up uh, question, if I may. Um, apparently, you are the natural bridge from the college player over to the first year player in the New York Penn League here. How do you see your role as the bridge manager for those players? Uh, you know, first year players are interesting. Uh, I think at the lower level, uh, you can have a major impact, more so as they begin their ascent to double A and triple A. They pretty much have to figure it out, they have the process in place. My job, my job to be coaching and managing at the lower level is to teach them the process. Okay. Teach them to understand the routines they need to that need to have to be successful at this level. Teach them how to understand the grind. Teach them to be patient. Okay. You're talking about a 76 game season in 82 games. Okay. Um, have them understand their body. These guys are learning something new. Now, at the college level, some of these players are more advanced than some of the young high school kids that we're going to get. Okay, the kids from the Dominican Republic, not a season. Whereas if you may get a guy like the two young men you had last year, the Plantis and Mangum, but that are from SEC programs that are very developed. So you have to be able to kind of meld those guys together and develop a culture. And the culture is about the team. If they buy into the team, good things are going to happen. Thank you. We all love Jake Mangum and Antoine Duplantis, right? Yeah. 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 This is something that I'm sure at St. John's you, you, you saw, but uh, Jake Mangum's first game ever, your game's on Facebook Live, we had 29,000 people tune in for that game. Pretty nice. So. Well, it's Mississippi State. There's not too much to do down there. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, there are no better fans than the fans here in New York. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a lot of discussion about the Mets and is there a, a philosophy that you say, I love the Mets, that's why I wanted to say here, I like this, 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 and this? How do you, how do you balance that? Well, you know, if you go through the clubhouse, in the clubhouse there's a thing called mindset. It's kind of a culture that they're trying to develop. And, and uh, going back to when I was talking to Brody and to Allard and to Jerry Banner, they had, they, they had a vision. And I liked the vision of player development and what they, and what they were trying to do. That's what I'm about. That's what I was about, you know, all the years I've coached college baseball. You gotta develop a culture, you gotta develop a winning culture, but you also gotta keep in mind there's a development culture involved here. Okay, there's a young man learning how to play the game, okay, trying to get to the big league level. And we know how tough it is. There's a lot of guys that are good players but never make it. Okay, sometimes it's about opportunity, sometimes it's about luck. Uh, being in the right place at the right time. But uh, we want these guys to be good men to represent the organization, but also, you know, we're trying to develop them so that they can be, you know, viable candidates for the big league club. So I was with the coordinators and got a chance to meet them. So I'm playing catch up because I just uh, saw it on January 6th. And the announcement for a full coaching staff will be on Monday. So you can check our social media, brokencycles.com, find out who pitching coach, hitting coach, strength coach, performance coach, all that stuff. So. Collegiate level, you do a little bit of everything. Okay, and I had an opportunity to. Uh, I was in work with Billy Randolph in a World Baseball class. I was in the Premier 12 tournament. I was a bench coach. Okay, I spent uh, a summer with uh, the USA national team in 2010. With Garrett Cole on the staff and uh, George Springer and Jackie Bradley Jr. I was the hitting coach, first base coach. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Being around as long as I've been, I, 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 I have my hands on a lot of different things. So I'm a player development guy, and uh, I'm there to assist the coaching staff based on what I see, and my understanding of technology, to try to help these guys develop in all capacities. 
And you saw Garrett Cole. I saw Garrett Cole. He was pretty good. What is a $324 million man? I, I know this is pre-contract. What does he look like? What does it look like? I mean, let me tell you about Garrett Cole, which is a little different. Um, to me, and I and this is why I'm going to try to get across to our players, he was a team guy first. He was a team guy first. Matter of fact, he almost got a little bit of trouble because he was yelling out location from the dugout based on what the catcher was setting up. And the players from Team Q were not too happy. <laughs> we're going back and forth. So I tell you what, that guy's going to fit in good with New York because uh, he, he competes. And that's what I was most impressed. Obviously, his stuff is phenomenal. Uh, but he's a, he's a first class guy, hard working guy. And he's going to do well. He's very well. Question number five. Coach Blank, welcome. John Bezia, 1495 Sports. Great to see you again. Obviously, you've had a lot of success with St. John's. Over 800 wins, 24 years. What are you looking to bring from the Red Storm to the Brooklyn Cyclones? Culture, winning, development. That's what I've always been about. You know, I want these guys to come to the ballpark every day to give me an honest day's work. That's, that's all I ask. Okay, we're going to work hard. We're going to play with passion. I know the people in this room and the people in Brooklyn. They expect that. That's what it's about. And you know, it's a process. You know, every game we're going to play hard, we're going to play to win. It may not be pretty sometimes, it may be ugly, it may result in some losses, but you know, it's about development, getting better, and, and producing a group of baseball players. That's what it's about. That's what it's all about. I, I've always been about. It's playing catch up right now. You know, you got to learn what the organization does, and you got to learn the system, the mind link system, you got to learn players, uh, you got to learn how they go about their spring training. So. I'm playing catch up mode. You know, obviously I've done something by myself or through the through the St. John's University. Now I'm now I'm learning how the Mets want to do certain things. And I'm certainly gonna have some input the way I want to do things. So uh, it's gonna take it take some time to really, you know, get the ball rolling so so to speak, to get my feet on the ground. But uh, by the time I'm rolling in here, we're gonna be ready to go. Hello, my name is Mobia Davis Wakanda and I was asking uh, how do you deal with the language barrier? Because about the Dominican Republic, do you have a translator or to show them? What's the method that you use for yeah. them to understand? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, one of my objectives is to learn language. I think you know, communication. Communication is so tough. I know. Communication is part of teaching, and if the player doesn't understand, okay, then you're going to have some problems. So I'm going to do my best to learn the language. More importantly, I'm going to teach these kids I care about them. I'm going to find a way to find out what they're, what, what they're thinking and, and what the process is all about. We will have on our staff uh, bilingual players, bilingual players and coaches, so we'll get the message across. So, what's your experience? What are you What are you expecting to do to help players get up to speed more quickly as part of your player development plan? Yeah, you know, analytics, as you know, has become a big part of baseball. And to me, it has a value if you understand it and you know how to apply it. That's the big thing. Uh, sometimes too, too much information for a young player is not good. You know, analysis breeds paralysis. You gotta understand what you can give them, okay, what they understand. And again, uh, we have coordinators that are involved in the development plan of our players and our coaches on our staff are there to implement the plan, okay? So there's discussion about analytics, there's advanced scouting discussion, okay? But you know, it's like anything else. If I'm gonna read the book for Obi Dick, okay, I'm not, I don't want the whole version, I, I want the abridged version. What's usable, okay, to help me, okay, to help the players or help the players to help themselves. We use spark notes in high school. Oh, I hope you read Obi Dick's book. Come on. I saw the movie. <laughs> 